uh, we will talk about the solution to the Birman problem. Please, Mark Mikhailovich, you can start. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's very pretty, uh, but my talk will not be so interesting as the previous one. Yeah, and uh, it can it concerns um, concerns absolutely different uh, different topic, and I hope that Professor Bielishov definitely will be uh, at least one <coughs> the interesting I could not answer it in English in, in this topic. <coughs> okay, and um, uh, originally I I uh, I was going to uh, to discuss only solution to the Birman problem. But maybe, uh, maybe due to the interest of Professor Bilishov uh, to crane, uh, crane or soft uh, extension uh, introduced uh, by John von Neyman and Crane. And uh, so I decided to, to divide the talk in, in two parts. So the first part is devoted to so-called uh, Bekova series. So now um, this is uh, from Kautus and Lyoka, Ricky Simon and uh, Alonso. It is called Birman Crane Bishop Series. It was created by in three blocks. Uh, by first block was by Crane in 1997, uh, then Bishop in 52, and uh, finally Birman in uh, 56. <coughs> so uh, let me introduce the main object of the objects of the series. Uh, this A is a symmetric, uh, densely defined, closed, densely defined, symmetric, non-negative operator in Hilbert space. Um, in accordance with the uh, Friedenthal, Stone, and Friedrich series, and Felix was the last, but the most, the most important contribution uh, to the series. Um, it was a problem of Neumann more than 100, or no, less than 100 um, years ago. I post whether there exists a self adjoint extension preserving the gap. Uh, in, uh, Neumann himself proved that uh, self adjoint extensions with uh, a lower bound uh, uh, ne uh, arbitrarily negative, negative and small uh, lower bound exist, but uh, preserving the gap, uh, preserving the lower bound, he did, was not able to prove. This was proved by Stone, Freidenthal. And the most contribution, the most pro, uh, the most contentable proof was obtained by, by Friedrich. His construction is uh, still alive and is contained in several classical monographs like Sida, Ries, Ries and Nath, uh, Birman Salamiak, and so on, Achieser Glassman, and so on. Uh, uh, the most complete series uh, of extensions of uh, this non negative operator was constructed by Crane in this 90. 46. Uh, he proved the following uh, the following result uh, that uh, this um, uh, the set of self adjoint extensions preserving the gap on in other words the non negative self adjoint extensions uh, is no is non empty it was all uh, it was known but in general it forms uh, it, it forms an operator segment uh, the later means uh, so it, there are two possibilities. If it is one extension, or it is uh, in, in, it is continuum uh, extensions, and they form uh, a, an operator segment in the following sets. Uh, namely, uh, there are two uh, two extreme extensions of a joint. Uh, the, the the biggest one, and Crane proves that it is precisely the Friedrich extension constructed by Friedrich from absolutely different point of view. And uh, another one, which uh, the minimal one, which we call now crane extension. So this is A sub K. And uh, uh, the, the segment means that uh, the, the minimality of crane extensions means that uh, this resolvent is maximal one. And the maximality of Friedrichs means that this resolvent is a minimal one. So for any intermediate extensions, one has such inequalities. In particular, if uh, Friedrich's extension is, um, has district spectrum, the typical, uh, the typical example of the situation is uh, uh, if Laplace operator, for instance, in bounded domain, or Laplace operator with similar coefficients, but in, in, even in the whole space, in an unbounded domains. 
uh, when the Friedrichs ex uh, extension, uh, the spectrum of Friedrichs of one of one semi bounded extension is has discrete spectrum, then the Friedrichs extensions also has discrete spectrum. And in this case, due to inequality one, left inequality one, the eigenvalues of Friedrich's extensions are uh, are the most uh, are the biggest one. So um, if we put um, eigenvalues in decreasing order, then the Friedrich's extension uh, Friedrich's eigenvalues are bigger than uh, the corresponding eigenvalues of each intermediate extension. And uh, one meet uh, such situation uh, considering Laplace in uh, in bounded domain. And uh, uh, the green results were completely uh, uh, completely comp uh, uh, substantially completed by Vishik and Birman. And now it is called uh, Birman range nowadays. Uh, uh, I need uh, to recall uh, also one one more crane result. Uh, if if the operator uh, A is positive definite, positive definite, then crane described uh, his extension, his minimal extension in the set of all non-negative operators as follows. So <coughs> it's just <coughs> to the domain of uh, symmetric operator one should add the kernel of uh, of the maximal operator, of operator A, uh, a joint operator. And uh, starting with this crane result, uh, one can decompose crane extension in the following way. This is formula two. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, uh, so crane extensions uh, admit that this orthogonal decomposition as the trivial operator and the sum operator in the orthogonal complement of this kernel. And this, uh, this operator A prime K uh, is called uh, at crane, um, crane reduced, uh, uh, called reduced crane extension, reduced crane extension. And uh, this um, reduced crane extension plays an important role in the theory and has several interesting features. Uh, first, let me let me recall the crane, the following crane theory. If Friedrich's extension has discrete spectrum, so it's uh, in, in other words, it's um, uh, it's inverse or it's resolvent is a compact operator, then the same property, then so is the reduced crane extension. In fact, in the case of infinite dimensional indices of symmetric operator, uh, crane, crane extension has uh, zero is, a, is, is the point of continuous spectrum. So in fact, this is zero of infinite multiplicity. But the rest, the rest operator, this is reduced crane extension, is discrete, and uh, is discrete, and this is precisely the crane, the crane result. So it's resolvent and <coughs> is compact operator. My first result, uh, complementing this crane theorem, is the following. Uh, in fact. Uh, uh, the question uh, arises. Uh, in fact, it was formulated by Birman, apparently. Uh, but it's somehow related to his problem. Uh, whether is it true, uh, the converse implication, if we have crane extension, uh, crane reduced operator has disk spectrum, is it true that the Friedrich extension has this? So, uh, the kind of inverse problem. And <clears throat> it happens that it is not the case. And uh, this fact is related with the Birman problem, which will be discussed <clears throat> a little bit later. <clears throat> uh, so uh, my first result reads as follows. Let A be a non-negative, be a positive definite for simplicity, symmetric operator. 
and let AF be its, its Friedrich extension. And uh, then instead of grain implication, one has the following equivalence. What's grains imp, imp, imp PL? What is written at the first uh, line? A turns grains impl implication into the equivalence. Ah, uh -huh. the grain. <clears throat> Please have a look. In the crane, in the crane implication. Yes, yes, yes. We yes. have free uh -huh. this extension from the left. Uh -huh. But if you replace Friedrich extension by the original operator, symmetric operator, then, <clears throat> then first we still we still have implication. This is complement to the crane result, and non-trivial 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 complement which cannot be obtained earlier by this previous process. What, <clears throat> what, what, what is H one? What is H one? Space H one. Ah, space H1, this is the, uh, the range of the operator 1 plus A. A is uh, the образ operator 1 plus A. Да, этот образ все пространство. Нет, A, A is symmetric operator. And its range is some subspace. Ah, and uh -huh. complement is the defect subspace. So and the... Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So <clears throat> operator A is uh, somehow this is matrix, and B, um, we take the whole part of this. This is operator which acts in, a, in, in the space H1. This is mistake. Here should be H1. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK. And so and now we uh, first, uh, this is improvement of the crane implication when re we replace AF by and the second, in, in this week, weekend of left, uh, left side, we obtain the equivalence. <clears throat> okay, moreover, uh, so instead of infinity, I, I wrote, uh, this is uh, John uh, uh, Neumann Schatten ideals, but Crane did not mention, but it is, it's, it's, it's immediate from his, his talk. And, uh, um, but in fact, in fact, we can replace here uh, Neumann Schatten ideal by any two sided ideal, but not norm ideal, not symmetrically norm ideal. For instance, this is um, Birman Salamak ideals of uh, uh, operators, compact operators with power asymptotic behavior. And uh, uh, what is uh, maybe, uh, let me indicate. Uh, let me indicate this, this uh, few applications, uh, few improvements maybe. Uh, instead, of, uh, instead of ideal, we have the following equivalence on, uh, regarding the asymptotic behavior of this operator. So roughly speaking, uh, instead of Friedrich uh, extension, you should compare grain extension with original symmetric operator. And these two, two equivalences demonstrate this uh, and so um, the asymptotic behavior, uh, lower upper and lower limits on the asymptotic behavior for operator, uh, for, for the resolvent, part of the resolvent of the operator A and the crane extension are the same, are the same. Uh, the next question, uh, which naturally appears here, is the following. Um, whether the asymptotic behavior of both operators coincide. And uh, um, what, uh, Mikhail, простите за нескромность, uh, what интуиция подсказывает вам? Uh, совпадают они асимптотики uh, или нет? My, my intuition keeps silence. Silence. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, И, значит, interesting to mention that under additional assumption, 
and the addition of assumption. I keep silent about this assumption. Uh, I, I will inform you a little bit later. Uh, we have the following. Uh, the asymptotic of this operator A, in fact, uh, A means the uh, asymptotic of this operator. This uh, inverse and uh, P1. This asymptotic is equivalent, this power, the power asymptotic of this operator is, yeah. is equivalent to, to, the, uh, to the asymptotic of uh, crane extension, uh, of the reduced crane extension. So this asymptotic uh, are the same. And then here I mentioned counterexamples. Without additional assumption, without additional assumption, uh, this equivalence does not, does not hold. This, this equivalent does not hold. And this, um, this uh, presence of uh, counterexamples also, also depends, is, a, a, is a, maybe a consequence of the negative solution to the Birman problem, which will be mentioned above. Uh, below, which will be mentioned below. And uh, uh, also, let, let me pay your attention this is for this formula five from the previous slide. Uh, I'd like to pay your attention on this idea. Uh, this identity demonstrates that the uh, reduced crane extension, in fact, it is over, is a unitary equivalent, but not to the original operator, but to some operator with uh, this factor from the left and the right. And this is uh, absolutely new fact. And uh, Birman was uh, alive when I informed him about, uh, about this. And uh, uh, this is all, but uh, still unpublished. No, now it is unpublished in short, short communication in Russian mathematics. Mark, 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 excuse me, what is D DV? D DV, D operator v. D, what is that? Operator D, DV is defect operator on some operator V. What is the operator V? Defect operator means one minus V star V and square root. And square root. And what is V? And V is uh, in intimately connected operator with this operate so it's i could not explain this um, in few words what does it mean this is um, it, it appears as in the mess in the mess it's somehow connected with the difference between the resolvance friedrichs and crane extension so it's it's not trivial part you you sh should just uh, accept that such formula exists. And if you accept this formula, just believe me, without detailed explaining what does it mean, you see that if this operator resolvent, quasi-resolvent of A, this is, is compact, then automatically crane uh, reduced extension is also compact, is resolved compact. The converse, operator DV, is it an isomorphism? No, no. It is contraction. It is contraction. It is contraction. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. But if the operator A is positive DV, the, this contraction is, is, uh, is invertible, bounded invertible. And so in this case, in the case of positive DV A, you have equivalence. So this dv is bounded and bounded inverse operator. So equivalence four is immediate in this case in five. Okay, okay. 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 And uh, let me mention also the following: that um, this theorem two about the equivalence of asymptotic asymptotics it holds it holds under assumption. Let me mention. The, the Friedrich's extension, the Friedrich's extension is compact. Uh, compact result. Has compact result. 
but it is not enough, not enough that the operator A is compact, has, uh, has compactness. Right. And so I mentioned these counterexamples. It was not obvious for me, and I understood this uh, when I, in the paper in the flood, I didn't did not mention this fact because it wasn't that clear. Now I understand that this, uh, this condition is necessary, but it's uh, for another discussion. And uh, now this is a uh, strange this strange. No one. Uh, next result uh, that I'd like to mention, this is uh, this is result. Uh, we should prove the following after crane is that if A is symmetric, not necessarily semi-bounded operator, but with, uh, with trivial kernel, and if the operator A is inverse, uh, sorry, sorry, if the inverse operator <coughs> is bounded or compact, then there exists a joint extension preserving this property. So which is either bounded or compact. Inverse is uh, bounded or compact. These such extensions were called Birman, Vichy, um, by resolvable, разрешимые решения, or completely resolvent, this is only разрешимые решения. And uh, today uh, I think that almost there are no people who know who is familiar with this area, but uh, at that time, in 50s, too, this result, this Vishuk theorem, played a crucial role for his investigation of the, uh, of the boundary value problems for elliptic second order elliptic operator and boundary domains. In particular, he described all solvable extensions. No, solvable нужны, чтобы обратно было обратим, чтобы была непрерывная зависимость от начальных и от граничных условий. And, and uh, for PDO, P, PDE, PDE, uh, pseudo-differential operators and uh, so on. So, uh, for instance, if first the operator directly to Neumann map, to the best of my knowledge, appeared in the paper by which. And uh, one more, uh, one more uh, outstanding result he obtained that was extended the the classical green formula, which is written for bounded domain, for a plus operator, for instance. And, and, and it is valid for smooth fact. Extended to extend this formula, this classical green formula for operator for functions from the domain of maximal operator, it was absolutely non-trivial problem. And we should solve this problem in this. Precisely in this paper, the Vaznikva appeared, appeared boundary triples without title. And moreover, boundary triples for dual pairs of operator, because we should consider it a Schrenger operator with complex value potential. So this is it is written here that I present uh, recall his is a only symmetric part. And uh, uh, and what uh, deserves uh, what was to be mentioned that Hermander three years later, 55, or maybe even uh, earlier, I don't remember. His ah, Hermander's paper, maybe 55, and the uh, Russian book, 57, or eight, I don't remember. When Hermander applied Bishop results to investigate, uh, to investigate resolvents of arbitrary, sim uh, arbitrary. Uh, operator, differential operator, arbitrary order, arbitrary operator, in bounded domain, but operator with constant coefficients. When he, he firstly introduced the concept of torque, force, mm, силы, понятие силы оператора, force of the operator. Я не уверен, что по-английски это force. Ну, вот. And uh, uh, Hermander, Hermander described all operator with constant coefficients in bounded domain, uh, which minimal operator, which has compact inverse. Uh, ну, это в стране я не буду касаться 
It's good. Well, but this, it, 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 it's, it was very important result at that time. Uh, I don't know how how it, it is, it's, is it still alive or not, but uh, in several papers, it, it's a bit not so popular, but it, it, it seems to me that it's still alive. And now um, we, uh, we are ready to, to formulate Birman problem. Uh, Vishuk, um, Vishuk says the form Birman Pro, close to Vishuk said. Uh, so Vishuk proved that if A, uh, in, uh, zero is a good point for operator, and the operator A minus one is compact, then there exists self adjoint extension with compact inverse. Birman for, formulated his problem in the form. Is, uh, let A be a negative operator is the, is, the, is the following implication, now implication 7, is true. So compactness of A resolvent, I, I omit resolvent, it's тяжело каждый раз тянуть за собой. Compactness of A implies compactness of Friedrich extension. And uh, in fact, he, uh, he assumed that it is possible. And uh, when uh, it was started, Таня Сусина присылала мне Бирмана, там было пол страни, ну, около странички текста, где он пытался, when he tried to prove that it is positive. So the implication is valid. In fact, it, was, it would be a nice compliment to the Vishuk result, because Vishuk stated that uh, exists one operator, or not maybe one, several. Uh, but uh, in the case of non-negative, we should uh, did not touch this uh, this topic. This is precisely Birman. Uh, if non-negative, then uh, a special role, so как сказать, выделенный оператор. Ой, uh, the Friedrich extension has inherits this property of the symmetric operator. It happens that the answer to this question is negative. Uh, the abstract counterexample uh, counter was obtained uh, after his question, it was obtained immediately. First, uh, I, I made a mistake in that for him, but uh, when uh, on the same conference, uh, in one hour, I informed him that I was mistaken and the uh, answer is negative. And it was it was conference in St. Petersburg before 2000, don't remember. And uh, um, yeah, and moreover, it was published. Uh, but it's not interesting. No, what uh, what are the interest in the in the previous in, in connection with the previous statement, statements? Uh, what it allows uh, negative solution to the to, be, to the Birman problem allows us to state these three statements. Uh, in particular, it shows that counter, uh, uh, counter example, this counterexample shows that the crane implication three is not reversible in general. Because crane extension re reduced mid be compact, but Friedrich's extension not. So the crane, this immediately, this counterexample give a negative answer to crane implication. But in Korean application, if you replace IF by A, so it, it is equivalent. The same, uh, the same is true, it <laughs> same is true with respect to CRM2. Ah, to CRM2, regarding this asymptotic, uh, if we have if we have an operator for which Birman uh, Birman solution. Uh, Birman problem has negative solution, then the equivalence in CRM2, equivalence of asymptotic, does not go. So such examples automatically exist. So the assumption of um, compactness of Friedrich extension in this second CRM2 is in fact necessary. And uh, this third negative solution allows. A negative solution to Birman Pro allows us to complete Vishuk theorem as follows. Let A be in the negative, in the negative symmetric operator. And as such, that's trivial kernel. 
and assume that the inverse operator, inverse operator is compact operator. But Friedrich's extension, no. In this case, every self-adjoint extension which with, diff, with discrete spectrum is not lower semi-bound. So uh, in this case, the extension which constructed by which, um, which, which preserving which um, inherit this discrete property, uh, such operators are automatically unbound. So there are no, no semi-bound operator with discrete spectrum. OK. And now I am, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, when I informed Birman about this negative uh, solution to this problem, and he formulated, uh, at one, he formulated me personally, but in one conference he formulated publicly uh, that this necessary to construct uh, example, uh, explicit example, maybe Schrodinger operator, some differential operator. He would like to, to see differential operator for, he, for which his, um, his problem has negative solution. Positive solutions, no problem. Uh, let me recall that mi minimal elliptic operator, each elliptic operator minimal in bounded domain, in with good boundaries on, uh, has disk respect. It's inverse, has disk respect. Um, uh, his inverse uh, is compact operator. So, uh, if we restrict operator by projector, projector we have distance automatically. It's old. But uh, uh, nevertheless, how to construct uh, how to construct uh, operator elliptic operator with negative solution to the Birman problem? So <clears throat> I present this here very simple construction uh, restriction by myself to the case two by. Uh, general solution exists, uh, but it's more technical. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, so let minus delta is a Laplace operator uh, with traditional uh, standard domain of definition. And consider the sequence of points Y capital. This is sequence of point Y K. And um, uh, arbitrary discrete sequence. Uh, we define the restriction of a class operator to such a domain. So Sobolev space function from Sobolev space, which vanishes at the set y this e. Uh, moreover, we cube this, uh, this graph domain, so it doesn't. The main theorem uh, regarding the solution, this is explicit solution to the Birman problem, reads as follows. Let pk be a partition of R2 by square. Ну, то есть разбиение R2 значит квадрат. Uh, we center it at YK and with edges, uh, with edges parallel to coordinate axis uh, of the length DK. Ну, то есть квадраты со стороной DK. And with the centers uh, is disk, with the centers, the set of centers is disk and the length is DK tends to zero. Then the following hole. The operator A is positive definite. Close densely defined, so on this trivial. Uh, moreover, it's closure, uh, it is the closure of restriction. If we restrict operator to such domain, to C infinity, vanishes at R2 minus Y. Then the closure of this operator is precisely minimal. The inverse operator A minus 1 is compact. This is uh, A is uh, it's low bound, this one. Delta A is non-negative and minus delta A. And uh, this is a positive definite operator. So H, A uh, to the minus one exists in this compact. The Friedrich's extension is precisely this operator. And in particular, it is purely absolutely continuous. Singular spectrum is missing. Uh, so, in fact, this is explicit solution to Birman problem already. Uh, the crane extension admits the decomposition. The crane extension admits the decomposition. Where its non trivial part to reduce crane extension is positive definite. So, one can suspect that zero may be a low, uh, lower bound of this operator. No, it is positive definite. And moreover, 
it's lower bound, in fact, is um, it, be even bigger than one. Sometimes it's happened. In this example, maybe not, but sometimes it can. Such example already exists. And moreover, uh, so this is, uh, this, and so the crane extension, this reduced crane extension, has discrete spec, this compactment. And, uh, and so satisfy this assumption. And moreover, condition 10, condition 10, so this is, is necessary for rich operators to be compact. Uh, either A, uh, other operator, A original operator, either reduce crane extension. And what One is condi more. condition 10? Condition, what is condition? Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. So this okay, okay, the, yes, yes, yes. The okay. ages of this our cubes mm -hmm. and this our condition mm -hmm. tends to zero. And uh, uh, one more, uh, one more uh, curious, uh, curious uh, corollary, complement to the solution to the Berman. Uh, consider this operator as before. Then <clears throat> the operator a square is closed, densely defined, and so. Moreover, a minus square is also compact. Nothing surprising because a minus one was compact. Second statement. The Friedrichs extension, please take, uh, take a look. The Friedrichs extension of a square, one can mean that, uh, that it is also absolutely continuous, no? But the Friedrichs extension, it is given by this formula, and it is discrete. So, the, here, Friedrichs extension is discrete. But previous, in the, for operator A, Friedrichs extension was absolutely continuous. For the square, it is discrete. Uh, uh, so, th th is, uh, that is the inverse is compact. And the third statement is that the operator IAF, but square, so first we can see the Friedrich extension and then it's square. It is also self-adjoint extension, positive self-adjoint extension of the operator A square, symmetric operator A square. And so the operator is purely, this operator square is absolutely continuous with the vector uh, Lebesgue measure that has infinite multiplicity. So the Friedrich extension is discrete, but the square of the Friedrich extension of the A operator A is absolutely continuous. So this example demonstrates that <coughs> Friedrich extension may be discrete, has compact inverse, but positive, positive, there are many positive extensions in this uh, operator which preserve the gap, preserve the lower bound which have absolutely continuous. This is maybe a little bit surprising. Yeah. Okay. Правильно я понимаю, что у меня время пошло? Ушло. Да, в принципе, да, время кончилось. No, only one phrase that this solution to solution to the Birman problem for n's order operator is given plus potential it is find necessary and sufficient, by the way, uh, some result of Birman from his known 61 paper um, on, um, on the spectrum of, uh, of Schrodinger operators, yeah, and uh, others. And uh, such complement, su surprising that even uh, in three dimensions, there is uh, more strong result that was uh, Birman uh, with a potential, dependent potential. But what is interesting? It was interesting for me that if you consider this uh, not in three dimensional but in other dimension, you meet. Uh, I meet difficult to understand what. Uh, so some new concept for me appeared in the answers. So this is uh, capacity. Я вообще я я знал что такое есть емкость, но так сказать вообще оказалось что это очень полезная вещь. Я оказалось что ответ там формулируется в терминах емкости. Вот, на самом деле емкость остается за кадром. Ответ формулируется на куда нужно сужать. What restriction should we consider? Here it was point. Even in, in the case of three dimension, point is, is not enough. Operator will not be compact. 
But, uh, вот uh, сужать это множество должны быть соответствующие емкости. Все, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. And so. Okay, let's thank our speaker. And uh, does anybody has have any questions or comments? Please welcome. I have a question. Marek, uh, uh, what about Vishik theorem regarding uh, uh, regarding uh, an operator with good zero point about extensions of this operator? What what is that? Is is it uh, does it have something like uh, Friedrich extensions or or what? <coughs> you mean that the operator is not semi bounded below? Y yes, uh, yes, yes. But in this yes. case, in this case, if uh, these conditions uh, hold, does hold, uh, then uh, what is it? Uh, is there a theory like uh, like Crane's theory of, of extensions? Uh, yes, yes. Description of uh, yes. description of this, extensions, uh, so on, and so on. Yes, it is called a gap. So if uh, if you have a, a good point, so if then you have a gap. And the Crane result was um, that uh, if you have a, if you have a symmetric operator with a gap, then they exist. Self-adjoint extension preserving the gap. It's in fact a simple corollary of the result by Friedrichs. Uh, uh -huh. oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. What is more interesting is that there are for the gap, there are also operators preserving the gap, so adjoint preserving the gap, also forms a segment in this in the resolvent sense. And there are also two extreme operators. So minimal and maximal in the resolvent sense. And uh, if you are interested in just from general point of view, it's uh, uh, I can mention that it was a problem by Crane, uh, whether what happened if you have operator have two gaps or several gaps. And uh, these problems was solved uh, by Dirkach and myself in our JFA paper published in 91. You know this paper. Uh -huh. So in principle, there is a theory of extensions of the operator with of an operator with a spectral gap, something like this. Yes, yes? The spectral gap. With one gap, it is, uh -huh. it, is it has uh, several okay. common points with the extension theory extension of non-negative or semi-bound. Okay, Marek, thank you very much. Very informative talk, and I will ask you. Uh, to provide me with references by email, okay? Так, uh, references, я тебе прислал. Две короткие заметки, пока подробно не опубликовано. No, I mean yeah, about uh, the theory with spectral gaps. Ah, spectral gaps, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Все, закончили, а то, а то да. мы уже перебрали yeah. там. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, yeah, if no more questions, let's let us just thank speaker again. And we have now a short uh, six minute break.